So roughly speaking, so, so there, are, there are two methods of uh, uh, random metric theory, the way we are looking at the problems. So, so of course, I mean, there are, there are many other different ways uh, to approach random metrics, but, but what we have been doing is basically just uh, two objects. One is the green functions, and the other one is some dynamical ideas. Uh, so, so the the question is always you want to uh, want to handle some local properties, and uh, so if we combine these two, we, uh, it's, uh, have some quite effective uh, method to deal with many problems in the matrices. And so, uh, because uh, because already she was lecture on uh, a lot of these green function estimate and also uh, also part of dynamic method, so I thought that. Uh, uh, one idea is uh, maybe I just collect the, the dynamic idea using various parts of random metric theory and then uh, just look at all the problems uh, so that we try to solve, we use some idea, some dynamic ideas. And now, um, so one is uh, you can do this metric. So here I list a few of them and uh, um, so one is this matching brown emotions and this convergence speed. And the other one is, uh, sometimes you can also use dynamic idea and green function estimate. And then the, uh, it's also, uh, I find it also amusing that you can also, in the green function comparison theorem, you can also, the result, you can also try to use some dynamic ideas. So I will give one example of this as well. And then, uh, also, uh, for the eigenvector, you can also look at eigenvector from a dynamical point of view. And the last thing I will say is just some, some related result in other dynamics. So this is uh, the point. And uh, many, many of these results in this lecture is hold on the, the four moments assumption. And so uh, uh, by Terry Tao and Van Boo. But so, uh, uh, I mean that, <coughs> so I will try to uh, cite it, and, but sometimes I might forget. So, all right. So the metric Brownian motion. Uh, so you take uh, you take a matrix H of T. H is a, it's a symmetric matrix. And now you you look at the this is basically the metric einstein runge process. Uh, this is D B of T. The each component B I J is a, is an independent Brownian motion, but subject to the symmetry uh, assumptions. So. So the, the one, one, we, one can solve the onsite element process, and so you find the edge of t at time t is exactly a linear combination of the initial data. So this edge is edge zero initial data, and plus the GOE piece. And so, so anything you say about eigenvalue of this flow, you will turn, uh, you will tell you about uh, about the the behavior spectral property of this edge of t. So. Uh, so the, if you look at eigenvalue equations, then this is the, the standard dyson brown emotions. So these eigenvalue equations. And then actually the eigenvector also has an equation. The eigenvector equation is, uh, is very complicated. It's, uh, you will see that, uh, you, you even see the lambda k minus lambda l square term here. And, uh, and then the, also the interaction term has uh, brown emotion. It's actually, there's, there's another match uh, there's another Brownian motions, independent Brownian motion here. So, so the, the dynamics looks uh, uh, very complicated. And then, but there are two, th uh, the key important thing here is, uh, if you look at the Dyson Brownian motion, it actually has the GOE. So here I take the GOE, but of course there's more general result, but, but let's take a real, uh, real metrics, and then the GOE is invariant measure. GOE's eigenvalue distribution is invariant measure for these uh, dynamics. And also, if you look at the, the eigenvector equations, then you find that uh, the hard measure on the orthogonal group is actually invariant under these dynamics. So these are the two, two things we keep in mind. And then the whole thing, everything we, we are trying to do is really just to study these two dynamics and to study the time to local equilibrium. You don't want to study the time to global equilibrium because uh, the global equilibrium is very e I mean, the time to global equilibrium is very easy and it's not very useful. It typically takes a long time to reach it. And so you want to study the time to local equilibrium. 
And now, if you understand this uh, time to local equilibrium well, and you combine with green function comparison method, and then you can prove the universality of random matches in many cases. So this is the, the general strategy. Okay. Now, uh, so let's start with the, the case of uh, the eigenvalue piece. So the case of eigenvalues, because we, are only, we only care about eigenvalues, so you can say the initial data is, uh, is a V of I, and V is, uh, you, just, you just give a different name of uh, initial data of eigenvalue is that is V of I. So, so for the DBM now, the only thing matter is really the probability distribution of this V of I. Uh, a standard object is, cons is computer stage transform this V, and this code is MV of E, and then you put a, a complex parameter Z, and E plus I eta is equal to this guy. All right, so, uh, so the, the, the thing we are, we are, we are especially interested in the major part of this because it's tell you that uh, the distributions of, uh, of, this v, uh, of this VI. And then, uh, so um, the, the results is the following. It's, uh, if you take, uh, uh, if you have a certain range, that uh, this imaginary part of this M of V is, is in between two constants. So you need to know that it's in between two constants. And, uh, and then uh, for range of Z in the fixed energy, you fix one energy E naught, and then there's some, there's some neighborhood of the size eta star. The eta star is, uh, oh, by the way, I should, I should mention that uh, uh, in, in my convention, I always choose the, the eigenvalues here is uh, from minus two to two. And so, so the eigenvalue is uh, space in this, uh, typical eigenvalue space in this is one over n. So this is the, uh, well, maybe it's, it's good for you to make the comparison. All right, so you fix, uh, you fix the energy, energy E naught, and then you take a size eta star. And at least n to two epsilon just is slightly bigger, it takes eta star. Then you find that, um, you find this, uh, the, 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 if you compute the, or you compute the correlation functions of the eigen, eigenvalue distribution, so here I, I, I suppose, I'm assuming that uh, uh, this standard notation of eigenvalue probability distribution of k-point correlation function, of eigenvalue correlation function. <coughs> so I call it this pt of k at time t. And then you look at, at one fixed energy E, and then you, you shift by one over n, and then times test functions, and you subtract the same quantity of the GOE is, is less than n to the minus epsilon, <coughs> minus some spatial constant C. So this gives you the, the fixed energy universality and under, under the assumption that uh, uh, the, the initial data is, uh, the stage change for initial data is bounded uh, for a certain range of, uh, for a certain range of energy and also for the, for the complex parameter eta is only bigger than eta star. And it means uh, you are trying, your assumption is initially you don't assume the, the fine structure of eigenvalues. You only assume that uh, you only assume that it's bigger than assume it's probably bigger than eta star. And on the other hand, this is good enough to tell you as long as you know information up to the, the scale eta star, and then you take a time slightly bigger than eta star, then you reach uh, local equilibrium. And this energy E has to be in this interval. I forgot to say it. The energy E has to be uh, in this interval, actually, it has to be slightly smaller because you're assuming something in this interval, but your universality has to be slightly smaller. All right, so, so this is uh, the fixed energy. Uh, uh, for quite some time, the, uh, it's considered uh, as one difficult question in the, uh, if you, I mean, you can ask the uh, universality in many, many, many different sense, and this is one of the hardest case. And this was done, uh, for the Wigner matrix, it was done uh, by some of my co-workers. And in some permission case, it was done by Tao Wu and uh, some of my co-workers. And there are actually quite a few people here, so I didn't list off them. And now, um, now all this, uh, um, the, 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 the result we, we have here is uh, some sort of local convergence to equilibrium. But this idea of local convergence to equilibrium was, uh, was first tried 
and uh, uh, by um, by early Shiloh and myself. And, uh, but over there, we assumed that eigenvalue has satisfied some rigidity of eigenvalues. And, um, and, then, uh, and then also, there's another sense of uh, eigenvalue uh, universality, it's called gap universalities. And uh, so, so I will not talk much about that. And, so. um, and the local version of gap universality was also, was also proved. And uh, so these are just these some of heuristic, some previous result. And now, uh, because today what I want to do is uh, something a bit, a bit different. So I will not give a detailed proof of this theorem. I'll just list some, some elements of the ideas. And, uh, and later on, maybe I'll show you one or two pieces, because, uh, uh, because I, what I'm trying to do is uh, just show you that uh, the dynamical ideas is actually useful in many places. So, so the elements idea is we use the couplings, and we also use homogenizations. And, uh, and in some places, we, we use maxima principle and finite speed of propagation in, the, uh, in, in some, some sort of uh, particle system method. And also, we use uh, central limit theorem for linear statistics, but for non-compact uh, functions. So. All right. Um, so now, so this is the, uh, the, the fixed energy in the, uh, in, in the bulk. And then if you look at the, the question, at the edge, then you have to assume something slightly, you have to assume something stronger is, uh, you have to assume that at the edge, there's a, there's a point, uh, because you don't really know, you don't really know what, where's the edge, and you know that you need to assume that uh, the initial data, there's a fixed edge, and with this fixed edge, the imaginary part, behavior is the same as this MSC, is a semicircle. So here, I have written this MSC. This is a semicircle, a stigial transform. This is a semicircle. And it satisfies the equation M star plus uh, MZ. Uh, wow, well, I think it's equal zero. So, so this is the semicircle, it's a stigial transform. <coughs> and we assume that uh, because we need a square root behavior, so it's just in some is bounded below and above by the, uh, the semicircle behavior. And then the, the time to equilibrium is, uh, you need this eta star is bigger than n to the minus 2 third. This is the, the smallest time scale you can deal with, you can do it. And now if you take time is slightly bigger than the square root of eta star, then you can show that uh, the statistics will converge to the, the GOE statistics. And uh, I mean, it's the same as previous theorem, it's just, uh, it just uh, I can vary it at the edge. So convergence to be here is the square root of eta star near the edge and, and the eta star in the box. I explain this eta star square root where it comes from later on. Okay, so, um, so you, may, you may ask that uh, uh, why do we bother to prove all this theorem uh, after, uh, after spending so many years? And uh, there are many theorems already proved. And why do we? Do we go back to study all these local versions? Okay. So the reason um, is, uh, is we, we study a local version because uh, for various reasons. One is uh, the so-called rigidity of eigenvalues. So which was, uh, uh, I mean, for those who you know, that's, uh, they said there's a concept of rigidity. It means eigenvalue is, has to be close to what is classical locations, quite close. But this is not an easy result. I mean, this concept, uh, uh, it's, a, it's not easy to prove uh, eigenvalue has, has to be quite close to its cross classical loca location. So this is not easy. And the second thing is uh, uh, there's, uh, there's uh, some, some estimate called label repulsion. So label repulsion is always assumed in the previous work. And now here, there's no assumption of label repulsion. And uh, the next point is that the assumption is always local because in the beginning of random metric theory, if you want to talk about the box uh, universality, you also have to understand the edge because, because the edge will influence the box. So now, now this is completely separate. If you want to know the edge, you just you have to study the edge. If you want to know the box, you study the box. Everything is local. And, uh, and also the, the assumption is that depending only on the, the bounding is the transfer of initial data, at the scale is only bigger than eta star. You don't have to go to the smallest scale, and then it works. 
uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a tiny, uh, I was cheating a little bit, there was some tiny uh, technical assumption this, this, uh, about this V. I mean, here at least uh, it's only this assumption, but actually there's another assumption, this V cannot be too big. You can imagine that there's some V very far away, exponential, exponentially large. It's going to change many things. So what's, when this some sort of uh, some, um, some st pretty still be bound on that, and, but, but otherwise these are all assumptions. All right, so, so then, um, now I want to use uh, uh, use a random graph and to, to see the application of this method, and uh, it can be the Erdős Rényi or random deregular graph. So now um, uh, the random deregular graph. I um, so the idea is uh, now in this case was we want to see the uh, what we can use uh, what uh, what this method tells us. So now. Um, so you can look at this uh, uh, early graph uh, with probability p to select the edge. And uh, so the typical number of edges uh, per vertex is mp. Is e we write this as equal to q squared. So, so q squared, uh, I mean, it's a, uh, q, q turned out to be a, a quite good uh, parameters. And then if you look at the, the sparse uh, random matrix, I mean here we use a center one, but you can also remove the center condition. Then you find that it's, it's mean is zero, the variance is one over n. Or oh, by the way, the variance one over n is a convention uh, we always follow, and uh, which is different from Terry's talk, which is the variance is one. And now you look at higher moments, so the higher moment is, is the not decay like one over square root of n, it's decay like one over q to the k minus two. So the higher moment decay is slower. Uh, and then this q, you can choose, uh, choose q to be as big as uh, as the square root of the n, because, and then uh, it becomes the, the Bernoulli random matrices. But when q is very small, there is, is very sparse random matrices. All right, so, so we proved that for, at some point, for some time, that if q is bigger than n to one third, this means n to two third of a typical number of edges, is the, the, the bulk of the edge universality hold. And for the bulk universality, later on, we show that uh, for q is bigger than n to the epsilon, then, uh, then the, the, the bulk universality holds. And this proof is completely, this proof is correct because we, we use the, the previous result I just mentioned about this uh, local convergence speed. And the reason is because uh, for the sparse random matrices, uh, this rigidity of eigenvalues is actually false. It's not even, you cannot, it's not that it's just, it's not just that you cannot prove it, it's even wrong. So, so that's why, this actually is a lot of motivation is to try to uh, prove uh, things without this uh, rigidity assumption here. Uh, this, uh, this, is, this, uh, this excellent result is, I think it's, uh, uh, it, when, when we did this Q3 entry one third, of course, I mean, one can improve this. And, uh, uh, but then the, the Lee and, uh, and the Kevin Schnelli, they, was, uh, they were able to show that at, at the edge, they can find a, a deterministic L, so that this, uh, with respect to this deterministic, huh? uh, there's no more, I don't understand. But huh? what, where is the, did you see? Oh, okay. Oh, there's no, I see, there's no battery. There's no battery here. Um, I, I can use it for click. Okay, all right. So you, you just imagine where I talk. Okay. Um, so, so the, the so they find a deterministic L and then find the lambda one minus L is Tracy Whedon. And the way they did it is uh, they did not use any of this. Uh, um, they did not use any of this uh, dynamic method I talk about. So what they was able to do is uh, they just compute the green functions and, uh, and compute the higher order expansion of green functions uh, and find a, uh, a self-consistent equation to higher order in Q. And, uh, and then they, they, they was able to identify the edge eigenvalues for Q bigger than n to one one six. Um, it's a spectacular expansion because it's, it's expanded to all order in Q. Yes? 
What is Q bigger than equal to zero means? Oh, it's one, okay? So, sorry. Sorry. It's, oh, okay, so it's, uh, anyway. I mean, it needs some edges, so it really means one. It's not, the, okay? All right, so, uh, so this was the, uh, the sparse result. And, uh, and now uh, and we, we combine the, his method and, uh, and this edge uh, universality, this uh, local the converging sphere Dyson Brown emotions. And what we can do is uh, we can do slightly better. It says uh, there's a quantity called HIGS squared minus one over, one over n, which is the, oh, I see, which is the fluctuation of the So, so you look at this uh, chi, which is the fluctuation of the edge, the total edge, and then you find out if you take your eigenvalue, you subtract this quantity L, and you also in addition you subtract the chi, then it will converge to Tracy Whedon uh, in the time in the Q bigger than one nice. So what it means is uh, at the point of uh, n three one Q equals n three one six, yes n three one six. Um, the edge eigenvalue distribution is a sum of uh, is a summation of uh, of Tracy Whedon and plus uh, plus a, a Gaussian Gaussian chi. And you can check that uh, for Q bigger than n to one six, the the Tracy Whedon wins over the Gaussian, and for Q is lo below that, the, the the Gaussian wins over the Tracy Whedon. Uh, so this is the but once it's below n to one nice, uh, our result become weaker, and uh, and then uh, we didn't we didn't identify uh, uh, we didn't identify lambda i completely for below n to one nice, and for that you have to do expansion uh, even higher order in Q, and so uh, well I don't know maybe uh, maybe some brave young people would be able to do it, All right. so uh, and then. Um, so this was the, and now, so let me go back to, to green function. So I just, write, I just remind you the green function is, is written in this way. You take these eigenvectors, and then you look at this lambda j minus the eigenvalues. And then the imaginary part is typically look like, uh, like this, okay? So now, uh, the green function estimates, if you look at uh, everything uh, we have done, and actually, Essentially, most people, when, whenever you look at green function, it's always some self-consistent equation. Now, uh, you analyze the self-consistent equation in various ways, and uh, but what I'm trying to to, uh, to mention is that sometimes you can you can you can integrate some uh, dynamic idea into the problems and make the problem doable. And so, so this is a case of the regular graph. So for D regular graph, and uh, as long as the edge D is bigger than log to some power, we prove the, the local law is correct. And this means uh, the green function is uh, up to some almost n three minus one in the imaginary part is a good estimate. And also the eigenvector is delocalized. Now, uh, and, then, and then for the for finite D case, um, the theorem becomes much more complicated because it becomes the the, uh, the Keston McKay law, and uh, and you also uh, has a convergence, and we also prove the eigenvector are delocalized. But here we only we can only do this in the bulk. Uh, there are some problems at the edge. Now um, now the the idea here is uh, if you look at random D regular graph, so. So besides the self-consistent equation ideas, the only thing we, the only additional element we play with, of course, a, the, the, the real implementation is quite complicated, in, including various uh, multi-scale estimates. But roughly speaking is that if you look at a, if you look at point, and then you look at its uh, a neighborhood, and now uh, you can see that uh, as long as this radius is not too big, it's basically like a tree with a few loops. 
And then the idea is, uh, now you look at the, the edge, you look at the, uh, you look at the edge near the, bound, near the boundary, then you resample, then you resample the, the, the edge, the edge uh, of the boundary, and this actually provides uh, enough uh, new elements to analyze the green function, um, the d regular graph. I mean, this is a bit hard to understand, but roughly speaking, when a d regular graph has some sort of, because you, you have lots of conditions, you have lots of condition. So your metric lost a certain independence. And the typical, I, the typical way we are dealing with the problem is always uh, you assume the, the metric element is independent or, or maybe it's dependent on, on your neighborhood. But on the other hand, the, the d regular graph has the dependence is quite complicated. So, so sometimes whenever you, like you write down this short complementary formula, it just completely, uh, there's nothing. It, I mean, it becomes completely dependent. So, so, so you rely on these uh, resampling ideas and uh, to provide some additional randomness into the problem. And uh, so that's, all right. So I will just, uh, I will start this here. Uh, uh, this is some of the previous works and uh, uh, they are quite a lot. And so I don't have time to, to go over all of them and how, to, how they prove it. And so, um, uh, the, some of this comparison is, is, is really unfair because they, they did this for fix. They did this for the deterministic, uh, whenever I put a star, they did it for deterministic ensemble. So, so it's not really fair comparison. All right, um, now the next thing I want to say is that um, these switching ideas, actually um, one can implement these switching idea and provide some some comparison result, and this I find this part is, is quite uh, quite interesting. It's a uh, the switching is uh, you take a metric like this, you, you just switch these two, and then you you find that you find that uh, the the regular condition is completely invariant. So this is uh, invariant, and and then we call this uh, the Q, this generator of this switching dynamics. So this switching dynamics has uh, has uh, has operated Q associated with this dynamics. And on the other hand, now you look at it, the dyson brown motions, and then because, uh, because this number of edges are, are constrained, so you look at this uh, under the orthogonal direction of one, one, one directions. And then, then, then you denote generators by L. So, so, the, uh, so then you find that if you, if you compute the, the dynamics under two different dynamics, one is under, um, under this switching dynamics. The other one is uh, you compute, compute the same thing under the dyson brown motions. And then you, um, you act this function, when I write a function of this eight divided by square root d minus one, but, but actually this is really, really just, uh, uh, this function is either the eigenvalue or eigenfunctions. Or, or typically what we took was uh, uh, was this was a green function. Then you find these two dynamics actually are close to each other and with some error terms and then there are some, some error estimate in terms of the regularity of f. So roughly speaking what he says is, uh, is the eigenvector distribution of dyson brown motion switching dynamics are close to each other. So instead of, uh, instead of trying to prove that, uh, uh, that our typical way to study the universality is to study the flow by Dyson Brownian motions and then show that the eigen, eigenvalue didn't change very much under this flow. But here, we, we did it differently. Here, what we say is that you look at the, the Dyson Brownian motion and you look at switching dynamics, but actually, they, are, they, they follow each other very closely for some certain interval. And uh, in this interval, you find the Dyson Brownian motion already, already reached equilibrium. And on the other hand, already reached local equilibrium, sorry. That it's, it's already reached local equilibrium. And on the other hand, you still know that these two dynamics are not far from each other. And then, because the switching dynamics will keep the probability distribution of eigenvalue for, the, for this uh, d regular graph invariant, then you know that uh, the, the d regular graph uh, satisfies this bulk universal, certified bulk universality. So that's the, that's the idea. 
So here you find that uh, a, a different way of play with dynamics. It's, uh, it's not just the study is local equilibrium. It's you, you actually are com compare two dynamics, and then you find that one of them is invariant dynamics for your probability measure, and the other one is Dyson Brownian motion. So, that's, uh, so this is a different way of play with the, the dynamics ideas. All right. Now, uh, so next, I want to talk about the, the eigenvector. Yeah, I have a question. Yes. So the dynamics, switching dynamics? Yes. So then you're projecting onto the eigenvalues? So yes, yes. So is it Markov when you project onto the eigenvalues? Or well, you, what, what you are doing is, uh, you, for example, you just compute the green function. Think about this is just the green functions. So if you, you can, comp uh, you know, you, I mean, a typical object we are computing is, uh, you take uh, H minus Z, you take a green functions, and then you can you compute the trace, and uh, you know, so this kind of quantity, and this kind of quantity can tell you where the location of the eigenvalue is. So, so it's always uh, it's always played direct, directly on on the green function because if you look at the eigen, if you really write down the eigenvalues, then of course you still can differentiate; it's not a problem. But the eigenvalue. But derivative eigenvalues will, will produce this, um, you, will, you will need this uh, level repulsion to understand the dynamics, the eigenvalue de derivatives, and so So, but once you use the, the green function, so this problem sort of, we sort of avoid it. All right, so, so next thing is uh, about an eigenvector. Now, uh, now about an eigenvector, uh, there was two, two concepts of eigenvector. One is uh, delocalizations, and this delocalization, this was uh, because we, was, uh, all, we all start from the Reynolds and Schrodinger operators. And so, so this is the, the key concept we're trying to understand is the eigenvector is sort of fairly flat, right? so this delocalization. And the other one is a some stronger notion called the quantum unique cardicities. And there are many people did that, and roughly speaking, it just says the eigenvector is basically flat. I mean, but, but when they say flat, it's really, really flat. It's really, uh, in terms of, eigen, in terms of uh, eigenvector, it means, uh, it means if you average the eigenvector over, over a set, then it's really, it's really completely flat. It really just becomes one. And so, so we will call this uh, probabilistic QE because uh, we are dealing with the matrix. And then you take, uh, you, you take, you take a set has to be large enough, and then you take an average, then, then you want to say it's, it's completely flat. All right, 